welcome to the Motorsport Coaching Podcast, sponsored by Motivate Training and Management. This is a podcast where we talk to drivers and industry experts to help you maximize your performances on and off the track. Let's get started with today's show. Hello, guys, and welcome to episode 53 of the Motorsport Coaching Podcast. I am your host, Belinda Risley, and today I am joined by... Now, please excuse, guys, you know, for those long-time listeners, that I'm so bad at pronouncing names. And Peter, I'm going to apologize in advance if I get this wrong. But today I am talking to Peter Vodemich. And Peter from New Zealand, hopefully I got it right. Peter is an up-and-coming Kiwi driver who started his career on a simulator playing PlayStation. And after only three years in a car, he has made his mark in motorsport scene and is currently competing in the Australian Toyota 86 series after being selected into the Paul Morris Motorsport Academy. He has won a few categories uh, and he's got a really interesting uh, story and I'm looking forward to sharing that with you today. Uh, Before we get started into today's show, don't forget guys, we do have the upcoming online sponsorship workshop called Getting Started with Sponsorship, which is going to be held on November 2nd. 2019 online as I said so wherever you are in the world um, you can participate if you can't make that time it will be recorded and I'll be able to assist you um, after the event so please go to our Facebook page at motivate t and go down to the event and sign up I'll look forward to seeing you inside the course now let's get started with Peter Peter, and welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the show, so really cool to be here. Yes, well, i am really become a huge fan of yours. After reading into your bio and learning about your story, I'm really excited to share that with our fans today. So before we get started, let's hit the fast forward questions. What is your favorite racetrack? Oh, I'd have to say probably Highlands or Bathurst, even though Highlands was... Uh, much nicer to me than Bathurst was. Um, the both <laughs> really cool tracks. So, from my ignorance, where's Highlands in New Zealand? Yeah, in New Zealand, so South Island. South Island, fantastic. Um, do you have pineapple and pizzas? Yeah, yeah, of course. It's it's pretty delicious. I think. I know. I don't know the same people who say no. Anyway, Ford or Holden? Uh, I don't mind really, to be honest. Um, I'll I'll basically drive anything with wheels. <laughs> Mutual, fantastic. Or fruit or veggies? Uh, yeah, fruit for sure. Like, I've come around to veggies, but um, yeah, definitely a fruit guy. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, for Peter, for that little introduction. Let's get on to the serious stuff. Now, <laughs> well, I do say serious, but I do legitimately want to know the answer. Why do you think New Zealand drivers are better than Australian at the moment? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah it's, been, it's been really cool to see the racing talent um, that New Zealand produces like all over the world um, also in other sports as well but I guess the motorsport I think we're we're pretty lucky to have you know quite easy access to all the tracks so like Pukekohe and Hampton Downs is only a few hours away from me mm-hmm. um, where I guess like with Australia and a few other countries I mean you know half the tracks we race on are sort of street tracks so you only get access to them you know a few times a year so so that definitely helps uh, having the easy access to them. Yes, well, that does make sense. So thank you for sharing that. Um, I haven't been to the New Zealand racetrack, so it's all a bit foreign. So I'm looking forward to you bring your insight to the show today. Um, so let's get started from the beginning. You started playing PlayStation. At what age was that? And what were you playing to get your interest into motorsports? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So quite a quite a unique background from that point of view I mean I think I was about 15 when I got my first actual simulator but I mean I've been playing sort of racing games just like Gran Turismo on the controller you know from since I can remember but yeah ever since I got a simulator around 15 it's it's been a roller coaster from there like I know my mum would always tell me off for being on it too long (laughs) but uh, now she finally understands I guess and did you get the simulator um, wanting to get into motorsport racing or was it just that maybe like you couldn't afford it at the time and so that was a replacement? How did the simulator come along? 
Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I definitely didn't come from sort of a family history of racing. Mm -hmm. um, so at the time, I guess a simulator was my only real like into the sport because, you know, my dad hadn't done any racing or anything before and, you know, no one in my family knew anything about it. So, you know, so the simulator was, you know, at the time, I, the only way I could really enjoy, enjoy motorsport. So mm -hmm. yeah, it was, it was quite a unique path, but you know, I'm sort of happy to come from somewhere different. Yeah. As I said, I love the fact that you haven't started at karting and that you've gone from simulator. Did you do any esport racing back then? Uh, Cause you're 18 now. Is that correct? Yeah. 18. Yeah, no, I haven't. I haven't really gone into the um, esports e stuff. It, it does look pretty cool, um, mm -hmm. but it is quite a time commitment. I've heard from other people that do it, um, and yeah. So really, what I was doing on a simulator to start with was just going around Bathurst and you know trying to get the fastest time and get in the top ten in the world, sort of for the game and stuff like that. But um, yeah, yeah, and just just learning all the basic skills that I can sort of eventually apply on the track. And then how did you convince your mum and dad in, uh, to get you a license and say, hey, I'm actually pretty good at this mum and dad. I wouldn't mind actually taking you to the track. Yeah, well, dad eventually um, found a passion for it as well. <laughs> I, I managed to convince him to get a 2K Cup car, which is a category in New Zealand where you, you just buy like old cars uh, for under around two grand uh add a roll cage and go racing so fantastic yeah i used to watch dad um do it just sit on the side of a track um and eventually after getting a few like driver training sessions of my own uh, managed to convince mom and finally got to drive it yeah so um you convinced your dad to buy a car um you first had to sit on the sidelines but then how did you go and get your license and um, yeah, develop your life and really get into your groove because you've obviously gone from simulator to um, Australian T86 in three years. So it's an awesome story. Uh, how did it all come about getting your license? Yeah, yeah. So like with the 2K Cup, obviously we need to get a license for that. So it was just a hairdresser's car, so a Toyota MR2. Yep. Um, so I did it with a guy called Mike Eddy, um, who runs a sort of driver training program I guess in New Zealand mm -hmm. um, and I also worked with guys like Tom Alexander who's now doing super utes and I've become quite close with him as well so uh, yeah like the motorsport community over in New Zealand's you know quite close-knit so so it's really cool to you know come out of there. And so when did you start racing the to Toyota MR2 was that is that the right thing is that um, when you were 15 or 16 or yeah, so I think uh, my first actual race in the Toyota MR2 was when I just turned 16. So, yeah, I guess I've only been racing for about two and a half years. On the simulator? Uh, yeah, in, in actual cars. Yeah, so. Oh, cool. And then um, you won a scholarship. You won two scholarships. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, I I really enjoyed the 2K Cup and obviously, you know, I was getting serious about it as you do. Um, and, you know, I was wondering, like, where do I go from here? Mm -hmm. So we we looked up online a few opportunities and we saw um, at first the BMW E30 scholarship. Yes. Uh, so this was in 2017. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I think there was 30 people there on the day and um, I managed to come second in the scholarship. Fantastic. Um, and this was, even though I didn't win the scholarship in the end, it was like a, a really cool opportunity because I got to meet one of my mentors and current engineers, uh, Todd Pelham. So he was basically the driving coach um, and gave me top marks for the driving section, which was, you know, really, really cool. And he's played a huge sort of role in my success to date. Oh, fantastic. We'll talk about Todd a little bit later. After that, you won the Sengyong um, Scholarship. So it was a fully funded drive. What year was that? And what did that mean? Yeah, yeah. So I, I managed to win the Sengyong Scholarship soon after that. That was only a couple of weeks after the E30 Scholarship. Um, so yeah, I ended up doing both the 2K Cup with the Toyota MR2 
the BMW E30 series and the Sanyong Utes and essentially my first year of racing. So, you know, I got, I got a lot of seat time in that year and sort of was able to accelerate myself to compete with others who had been, you know, racing and go-karting for many years before. So it was really, really cool. So pretty much in your first year, you're running three different categories. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So. <laughs> wow. So mum and dad obviously um, love the sport as much as you do now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, particularly dad's a huge fan and, you know, I've just got to take this opportunity to, to say, you know, thank you to him uh, yeah. for all, all his support, you know, to date. So he's been a real, real cool influence. And do you have any other siblings? Yeah, I've got one sister. So she's over in Wellington at the moment doing her law degree. So oh, okay. I don't really have to battle her on the track, which is good. <laughs> That's what I was going to get at. <laughs> oh, that, well, that's fantastic. So that's fantastic. So after three, uh, sorry, after racing three categories, um, what happened after that first year? So, yeah, we were, we were wondering, you know, what's, what's next. We were starting to, you know, get a hang of it. And um, I, we talked to a few different people. So obviously Todd, um, one of my mentors, and also, a few other icons of, you know, New Zealand motorsport, such as uh, Kenny Smith. Mm -hmm. um, and they all sort of suggested that the New Zealand 86 series would be, you know, the most logical next step, I guess. Yeah. Um, so we had, a, we had a really good season, basically, in that. Um, we finished fourth overall after starting 16th in the first round. Um, we were, unfortunately, were on the bad end of the, um, crash which was sort of out of our control um, so yeah we were 16th after the first round and then after a pole position uh, round one at Highlands and quite a few other podiums we managed to push back to fourth which was uh, really cool. Fantastic um, so you did win the Sam I'm sorry I'm just gonna go about one step there so you did win the Sam Young scholarship um, the, the fully funded drive in 2017 and then you went to um, New Zealand T86s. In New Zealand, do you feel like there's a blueprint of progression of where you should go at what time in your career um, or is it just, you know, wherever you feel fit that you want to go? Obviously, Todd and um, Kenny told you for T86, is that the, the logic steps over in New Zealand for progression? And, where yeah. does that, and then where does it take you? So after you do New Zealand, I mean, apart from coming over here to Australia, um, what, what would be the next step from T86 in New Zealand? Yeah, I think, you know, there's not that much more in New Zealand, unfortunately, just due to the, you know, amount of people that are over in New Zealand. Um, uh -huh. When you do that New Zealand 86 series, there's either the, you know, Toyota Racing Series, which is a single-seater series, or you, you try to make it overseas. So, um, yeah, after the New Zealand 86 series, you know, we, our, our focus was always to, you know, push over to Australia and try to do that 86 series. And so now you're here, you're in Oz, you've been racing um, this year doing the T86 series. Um, how has your experience been? And do you stay over here? Um, do you come over like a week before the event? How do you prepare for that event? Yeah, so when we when we decided to get onto the international stage, um, we we thought like the Aussie 86 series would be the best next step. Um, so we we managed to finish fifth for the round at Phillip Island on debut, which was which is really cool. Um, and then I was selected into Paul Morris's academy uh, for the remainder of the series, and basically his support and all of the resources he has with his, you know, Norwell Motorplex um, racetrack and all the other drivers he's, you know, allowed me to work with, such as Anton Di Pasquale and um, Shane Van Gisberg, and have been, you know, like an integral part of you know, improving myself as a driver. So really thankful to be a part of the academy um, with him for the 86 series, yeah. And what does that involve being a part of the Paul Morris Academy? I feel like uh, Norwell, he's pretty much 
um, been quite predominant in helping junior drivers over the last two or three years. So what does being a part of the academy actually entail? What services, yeah. like what services do you get when you're there and, and how does Paul help mentor you? Yeah, so as a part of his academy, he's got, I think, two or three other drivers in the um, 86 series and then also uh, Brock Feeney in the Super 3 series who recently won the championship. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's definitely a well put together program. And um, so at the track, you know, not only does Paul and a few other mentors teach us, but we also sort of try to teach others that are new to the track and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think, I think that's definitely huge in terms of, you know, improving ourselves as a driver because whenever you're sitting in the passenger seat, you sort of get a different perspective on how to drive and you, you might think about something that you might not have otherwise and stuff. So, you know, it's, it's really cool um, to have that sort of opportunity to, to do all these sorts of things with them. And so is Paul or his team like mentoring you through what's next, like what's going to happen in 2020 and, and are they going to guide you through? Is that your plan to stay in Australia or going to Europe or what's the bigger plan for yourself right now? Yeah, I think Todd's definitely our main mentor, but, you know, Paul's playing a, a huge role. I think, I think for next um, season, we're most likely going to do the Australian 86 series again. Um, and obviously with all of his connections, he's, he's sort of got a great pathway, um, to go out to the V8 supercars. Yes. Um, that would, that would ultimately be, you know, a really cool goal to get to. Um, but yeah. And does Todd come with you to every round? Yes. Yeah. So he, he helps to engineer the car for me and also looks through, um, data and footage for me as well. So. He used to be a driver of his own and, you know, he also knows quite a few other drivers like uh, Scott Dixon and Scott McLaughlin and a few others that he's grown up with um, go-karting and stuff. So, yeah, they're really, really privileged to have him on the team. And have you had any interest or shown any interest in the new TCR series that's going to be happening in NZ? Uh, yeah, the, the TCR series definitely looks cool. Um, you know we're keeping we're keeping our options open for it, but um, at the moment I think we we're just going to stick to our plan of doing the Australia eighty six series again mm -hmm. uh, next year, and then hopefully going into Super three. But you know we're definitely not ruling it out as an option. And so Peter, when it comes to sponsorship, how do you go about obtaining um, sponsorship for an Australian series? Did you get sponsorship here in Australia, or did you? find an international company that had locations maybe both in New Zealand and Australia? Uh, yeah, so I definitely find it easier to, you know, raise money in New Zealand than in Australia. It's definitely a lot tougher where most of the companies are sort of like a cold call. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we've managed to get quite a few of our New Zealand companies or um, international companies on board over in Australia, which is which is really um, cool and yeah. Yeah, that must be fantastic for them. Have they actually journeyed across to see you race? Were they at Bathurst or in the other rounds? Uh, no, not, not yet, but hopefully we'll get them over at some point. You know, it'd be, be a real cool opportunity for them. So yeah, that's, that's the plan to have them come over at some point, for sure. So unfortunately you did have a major incident at Bathurst 2019 this year. Um, which gave them a lot of press time, <laughs> but all for all the wrong reasons. Um, can you talk us through what happened in, into that event? Um, yeah, it kind of just obviously came out of, um, I was going to say left side, but it literally came out of the right side of the track, didn't you? So. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, <laughs> they, they did get a great amount of coverage. I mean, a few of the stickers were flying off the car, but um, yeah, it is what it is, but... Yeah, it was a great weekend leading up to the crash, I guess. So we got 12th in qualifying, 9th in the first race, and we we're getting up to 7th in the um, second race before um, I had the big crash, um, which, was, which was really cool on debut, um, especially considering there's 35 odd cars on, in the grid. So, um, But yeah, so I basically, how it happened was I caught up to the pack in front um, I was in seventh at the moment, 
Um, and I was leaning down the chase. I uh, saw a gap on the outside and a few of us had ABS failures, so they were breaking quite early. Mm -hmm. um, and then even though I broke early as well, um, unfortunately, as they were all bunched up and coming back across the right, I had to put two wheels on the grass and yeah, there wasn't much slowing down from there. <laughs> um, Hi. No, yeah, so I, I guess I just have to say a big thanks to the safety crew and of course, you know, the Paul Morris Motorsport team, um, and particularly Richie, who's going to need to do a lot of work to put the car together again, because um, we, we do think it's fixable, which is, which is great. Oh, but. Wow. <laughs> I thought that would have just gone straight to the tip, but yes. Yeah, yeah. So the roll cage and everything's fine, which is, which is great. So, you know, we'll do our best to fix it and get on the grid for Newcastle. Um, yeah. But yeah, I guess like in a situation like that, although it is challenging mentally and physically, Oh, sorry, mentally and financially, um, you sort of need to do the most you can to, you know, turn it into a positive situation and I guess like own the situation. Obviously, yeah. we got a huge amount of, you know, social media coverage from it. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess I just have to take advantage of that and, you know, use it, use it as a benefit. Yeah, for sure. And hence why you're here today. No, <laughs> this is already lined up. Um, so you did mention about the, the mental aspect of it, Pete. Sorry, and I'm going to get a little bit deep here. Um, what did it do? Was that your actual first real accident, I'm thinking? Yeah, that was definitely the biggest accident I had uh, by far. So, so it, was, it was definitely tough. Like, I wasn't as shaken as a lot of people thought I would be, but... Um, you know, I think just from it, I'm sort of more determined than, than ever to, you know, get back in the seat and, you know, prove everyone wrong. And, you know, like, I guess you sort of have to believe in your ability, uh, sort of, and like times like that and, you know, be good. Well, I guess from you, from a mental point of view, that you'd be like, now I know my car can go faster and harder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I, I think quite a lot of the stuff I did with um, martial arts helped there too. Um, just keeping me extremely um, like disciplined and sort of determined and having a bit of humility about the whole situation as, as I guess you need to. Yeah, so you don't just do motorsports, you do have a black belt in, I don't even know how to say that word. So if you can help me with it, cause I've never heard of it to be honest. Yeah, so it's, it's called Sao Jing Do. So it's sort, of, it's sort of like um, Taekwondo, I guess. It's, yep. it's Korean. Um, but yeah, so it, it's, been a, it's been a real great experience um, doing that. Like on a physical level, it, it actually does relate quite a lot to motorsport. Yeah, um, it's definitely. Especially yeah. with the reaction times, the fitness and flexibility, I guess, that you can gain from it. Yeah, any um, of those mar martial sports is fantastic for motorsports. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But mentally mm. obviously it takes an extreme amount of focus and discipline to become a good martial artist so yeah I was I was very fortunate to have that in my background I did that for eight years until I was about 16 17 yeah um, and I was very lucky to have a great instructor for that as well um Davey Vandervoos um and he's played like a big role in you know shaping my character today so extremely fortunate that's fantastic. And now, Pete, you've also been a part of the high performance sports program at school, uh, sorry, at university. What's, what's that program and what does that entail? Do they assist you like with your um, motorsport journey or, or like for training wise? Yeah. So, so this is like the high performance sports programs are part of um, university. So at the moment I'm doing um a bachelor's of engineering um full time so that's my first year so i sort of have to manage that as well as all the racing stuff which is which is obviously a huge time commitment and um quite quite difficult to balance so um the high performance program just so, sort of helps me with that and helps me to like reallocate tests and stuff um so i can focus on you know the the race at hand i guess yeah, and when you were three years ago back racing your PlayStation, did you want to be an engineer or back then, or is it that's just um, your passions just developed since you've been involved in the motorsport industry? 
Yeah, I mean, I was I was always interested with the, the technical side of it, but I think with an engineering degree, you know, you're not only learning stuff about like mechanically about you know how the car works and everything, but you also learn a lot of other skills like um, how to manage a business and stuff like that. So um, you you learn a huge amount of skills that you can sort of take back to the car and you know apply. Oh, that's awesome. So every, you recommend everyone to do university? Uh, I guess it's each to their own. I can't, I can't speak for everyone, but I think it definitely is a, is a help for me. And I think it does, you know, set, set me apart from others that I can sort of achieve something like that at the same time as, you know, focusing on a, on a big goal. So yeah, yeah and, I, and I guess that like doesn't um, definitely help you uh, working with the team as well. So being able to understand that side of the business and understanding that side of the, the tech. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's only my first year in it, so I've still got a lot to learn. Um, but, but yeah, it's definitely going to be a huge help in the future. Fantastic. And what other physical training do you actually do for your motorsport uh, so yeah, physically I've got um, a free gym membership with one of my sponsors, uh, Champs Fitness, which is um, super awesome. And then also I get free PT sessions from uh, my trainer Sean Dowling. So you know they've been they've been really cool, um, being able to help me out with that and you know keep me prepared for the for the race. Yeah, so gym and personal training sessions are one of those, I feel, sponsorships that is easy to come about. So it's fantastic that you've already got that aligned. Uh, what kind of work do you do with um, your PT? Uh, yeah, just, just all around fitness. Mm -hmm. um, so, so basically anything that's going to help me in the car. But um, yeah, we also did quite a bit when I went over to Paul Morris's house. Yes. Um, yeah, his girlfriend, uh, Cortina. She used to be a personal trainer as well. So uh, she ran a program leading up to Bathurst um, to help us get race ready for Bathurst, which is really cool as well. Yeah, and so that was a lot of cardio stuff, boxing. Yeah, yeah. So I did a, quite a bit of cardio, a lot of strength training um, and everything, really. So Fantastic. And do you enjoy all that these things? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Obviously, you know, doing university full time, um, it is it is hard to balance, but it's just one of those things that you have to make time for. So, so yeah, it's 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 definitely a super important part of a sport. So, yeah, I do I have learned to enjoy it. And so, when you're not at uni um, and you're not working on the car, what are you doing as far as like off track development goes? So, with sponsorship and social media PR your brand and all of that do you, are you doing it all yourself or have you got um, a manager an agent just listen yeah, to these yeah, podcasts right. to get more tips <laughs> but at the moment I'm doing it all myself so especially I was a part of um the elite motorsport academy in New Zealand yeah uh, so just to give you a bit of a background on that um it was myself and seven other drivers I uh, had a week-long camp in Dunedin last year um, and we learned a whole range of things on, you know, nutrition, psychology, uh, social media and sponsorship. Yeah. And then we also had um, this follow up program for the next year mm -hmm. um, with basically more tutorials and sessions on that, which is, you know, really, really cool. And I managed to actually win that academy, which I'm, you know, extremely grateful for, um, particularly because, you know, there's some super prestigious names that have uh, being a part of that academy, such as like Brendan Hartley and you know Shane Van Gisberg, and um, but yeah, the basically anyway, the academy, you know, sort of taught me to be able to run my own social media and sponsorship proposals. So you know, I've I've done my own website and Facebook and Instagram and all that. I make my own proposals. So yeah, it's really cool. And I must say, uh, from all the social media accounts and websites that I've audited, that your accounts, social media, websites is one of the most professional ones I've seen. So um, for those that are listening, if you're not sure where to start, what kind of content to post, um, you know, really, you know, how to get engagement, I really highly recommend to go and follow Peter. And Peter, what's the, what are your social media handles? 
Yeah, so you can find me on my website, uh, petervidanovich.com, uh, my Facebook, Peter Vidanovich Motorsport, and uh, my Instagram, so pvodanovich84, or just look up Peter Vidanovich. Yeah, so congratulations on doing it yourself. And uh, yeah, I think it's fantastic. Your branding's on cue. Everything's um, really, really professional. So well done on that. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, so, Petty, if, if, do you have any advice for someone that's wanting to get into the sport? As, as I said, a lovely story, the fact that you haven't come from karting, you've come from simulated, you've believed in yourself, your family believed in you, Todd's believed in you, and now you're in Australia three years later racing in the T86 with aspirations to go to Super 3. Um, I feel like you've got some great advice to offer people. Yeah, I mean, I believe if you're truly passionate about something, you know, you're going to find a way to do it. Like the motorsport community, particularly in New Zealand, but I guess worldwide is, you know, extremely welcoming. So I guess don't be afraid to pick up the phone and, you know, call a racetrack or drive a trainer or whatever. Um, obviously, you know, there's no right starting path to it. You know, I started on simulators, whereas a lot of us, you know, start on go karts. so each to their own. But, um, you know, if, you, if you're truly passionate about it, you should, you should be able to get in the sport just fine. And does New Zealand, like, Motorsport Association, I don't know the real name for it, sorry, but do they assist you anyway financially with all products or services in order to fulfil your career of getting your overseas? Uh, yeah, well, I think Motorsport New Zealand, uh, they helped with the Elite Motorsport Academy, which is, which is really cool. And uh -huh. the big, the big supporters of, yep. you know, all the drivers who make it overseas. So, you know, really cool. Oh, well, that's fantastic. So we've kind of touched base that you wanted to go to Super 3, possibly in 2021. Is, is that the ultimate grand plan or what's, where will we see Peter in about three or four years time? Yeah, I mean, obviously V8 Supercars is it's a main goal if I'm pushing okay. towards Super 3 like I am. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully we can do another year in Aussie and then a year in Super 3 and then move up to Super 2. It will depend what's happening with that category, but we'll just have to play it by ear. You know, we're part of a Paul Morris Academy, so, you know, he's, he's quite smart and knows what's going on. So, you know, we're in good hands. Yeah, so it sounds like you might have to relocate you, possibly. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So, <laughs> would, the whole, family, would, the whole, would the whole family come? Sorry, or would you just come alone? Uh, most likely, I'd just come alone. So, you know, it's not too far a plane ride. So, no, all good. How far is it to Brisbane to Auckland? Uh, good question. I think around four hours from memory. Not too bad. Not too bad. <laughs> So, Peter, to finish the show today, do you have any mantras or favourites saying that really helps you get through your race weekend? Oh, uh, it's hard on. Um, I guess. Well, something yeah. that's like true to you that. There's one from um, Joe Rogan. It's like, be the hero of your own movie, which I think is it's really cool. Um, yeah. So that basically means like, you know, you can you can basically make the most of your life and you know, do like whatever you want to do, basically you can do. Yeah, you know? as I said, I <laughs> definitely think that that's your mantra. You're definitely living up to that expectation. So well done. I get, thank you very much for joining me tonight on the show uh, and for all your insights into, again, a really fantastic story of someone that's just started three years ago um, to winning a category, to winning um, a at the Elite Motorsport Academy um, sponsorship to coming over here to Oz for Paul Morris taking you under your under his wing, sorry, and um, now having those aspirations to stay here in Oz. So maybe hopefully one day we'll see you on the Bathurst podium. Yeah, yeah, that would be awesome. Thank you so much for having me. No problems. We'll definitely stay in touch. We'd love to follow your journey. Um, always like to try and get the guests on in about maybe a year's time to see how the next year's gone and where you've progressed. So we'll stay in touch. And again. All of Peter's details will be in today's show notes. So please follow his journey. It's going to be, he's definitely going to be a driver to watch in the future. Thank you. Thanks, Peter.
Well, thanks everyone for listening to this week's show. I really hope you enjoyed that one as much as I did. Now, remember all the show notes with the links and the specials mentioned in today's show are available over at motivatetraining.com.au. If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you could head to iTunes or Stitcher, type in Motorsport Coaching, subscribe and leave us a review. Each week, I'll read them out and you'll go into monthly draw to win a fantastic prize. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at motivatetraining.com.au or head over to our Facebook page at Motivate to Tea. Until next time, take care.